This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Holder. It's Jeff Kadagavi and welcome you to another Sports Catastrophe birthday boy. And the birthday boy for today, November 24th, is an NBA icon who still is alive today. He's 84 years old. But he was known as the Big O. You can kind of guess who that is by me saying that. But he played for the Cincinnati Royals when since he had a basketball team, NBA team, and the Milwaukee Bucks. 12-time All-Star and won the MVP. He was actually the first player in NBA history to have a triple-double, average a triple-double season. A triple-double in basketball is if you have 10 or more points, assists, rebounds, points, assists, rebounds, which is the standard one. But you could also have 10 or more blocks, 10 or more steals to add on. So three, three of those five categories have to be 10 plus per game. In fact, this guy had Average triple double. He was the only guy until Russell Westbrook did it. Milwaukee. With Milwaukee, he brought them the trophy in 1971, which was their last trophy for five decades. Oscar was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 1980 individually, and then in 2010, when they announced that the 1960 U.S. men's basketball team would be in as the team in a team section. Uh, Robinson was one of the 50 and 75 greatest players in NBA history. He actually was an integral part of a antitrust suit, which was filed when Robinson was the president of the NBA Players Association, which meant that there would be a change of the free agency and draft rules, and subsequently higher salaries for all players. I guess I gave up and then a ghost, but yeah, it's Oscar Robertson. He was born in poverty in Tennessee, then moved to Indianapolis. He would actually like to play basketball. He went to high school. He was named Mr. Basketball in Indiana in 1956, meaning that he was the best basketball player of all time. Oh, well, of that thing. So anyway, Robertson surprised a lot of people. We're not going to Indiana, which was almost uh, the perfect fit. But he would be going to the University of Cincy with the Bearcats. And he excelled. He won the national scoring title once in the NCAA. And got Cincy to two Final Four appearances. He, he left the Bearcats as the NCAA's highest scorer ever until P. Maravich broke that mark, but he did his job helping the Bearcats get nationally recognized. The strange thing was that Cincy actually did better when without him, winning the 61 and 62 national titles and in 63 coming close to winning the third straight. He's still a Cincinnati Bearcat legend. In fact, the NCAA player, Division One Player of the Year trophy was renamed the Oscar Robertson Trophy for a while. Oh, but, oh, sorry, that's a trophy for the U.S. Basketball Register Association. That's not the highest, the Naismith. But, of course, Robertson had issues because, you know, America wasn't, wasn't integrated. They were segregated still, and he couldn't, he and his black teammates couldn't be where whites were. Despite all that, Robertson, alongside Jerry West, would co-captain the 1960 U.S. basketball team to a gold medal in Rome. They said this was one of the best assemblages of talent ever. And the Americans won all their games by 42.4 points. I think that's still the record. I don't know. I think the Dream Team broke it, but anyway. Ten of the twelve college players on the American squad, remember, this was when professors were not allowed. They played in the NBA. You had Robertson, Jerry West, Jerry Lucas, and Walt Bellamy on that team, who all came, who became good stars in the NBA. So Robertson said that he would be eligible for the 1960 draft. At the time, a team could give up their first-round pick in exchange for picking up somebody who were in their quote-unquote territory. 
in bas in college. So because Robinson went to the University of Cincy and Cincy still had an NBA team in 1960, they said we're taking him. So that's what they did. They used him. They used the territorial pick on him. And that well, that was the first overall pick in the draft. Anyway, Jerry West, Robertson's high school, I mean Olympic teammate, went second to the Lakers. And Daryl Imhoff went third to the Knicks. Yep. So a great draft. Robertson got a thirty-three thousand dollars signing bonus, peanuts in today's weeks, but this is nineteen sixty. Robertson in his NBA debut went 21 points, 12 assists, no, 10 assists, and 10, 12 rebounds. So he had a triple double in his first game. His rookie season, he put up 30.5 points a game, 10.1 rebounds, and 9.7 assists, which led the league, but were 0.3 assists a game short of going triple double for the entire season. Consequently, in his second season in 1962, he would do that. With 30.8 points a game, 12.5 rebounds, and 11.4 assists. Kind of strange how, you know, a shooting guard usually doesn't get that many assist, uh, rebounds per game. But yeah, he did it. He put up 41 triple doubles, which set the mark till 2017 when Russell Westbrook did it. Robertson broke the assist mark and all that. Since he kept trying to make the playoff, Kept making the playoffs, but this was during the dominance of the Boston Celtics. You know, Celtics winning every title from 59 to 66. So Robertson, unfortunately, could not really get the the brass ring, like the title, because of the Celtics. He did win MVP, though, in 1964. Hmm. The funny thing is that Bob Cousy, who was made since he head coach actually came back to the league and played for seven games for the Royals. I mean, it's a shame seeing Kuzi and playing for a team other than the Celtics. I didn't even realize he did that. Anyway, since he would shock everyone, including themselves, by trading the big O to Milwaukee for a couple of unknowns. Some say that Bob Cousy was the main reason because as head coach he was jealous of the Big O's attention. But I think maybe it's just to give Big O a title. There was problems though. Oscar would have a relationship with the Royals, which was so sour that since they actually approached LA and New York dealing with the star player. LA refused to do it because they would have had to give up Jerry West and Will Chamberlain. Well, and or Will Chamberlain. So anyway, Robertson looked good, but he was and he was paired up with a good center by the name of Kareem Abdul Jabbar. With Kareem and Robertson doing their jobs, Milwaukee won sixty six games and swept the Baltimore Bullets in the NBA Finals in seventy one. So he got his title. And he did everything. However, that season would also be known for what he did off the court. The antitrust suit, like I talked about. So anyway, because of this antitrust suit, the proposed merger between the NBA and ABA was delayed until 1936, and the college draft with the free agency clauses were reformed, reformed. Robertson said the only reason why he did this was because the clubs owned their players. Players were forbidden to talk to other clubs once their contract was up, because free agency didn't really exist until 1988. So yeah, so the suit was filed, and then the NBA finally reached a settlement, made a merger with the ABA, and signed more free agencies and higher salaries. Robertson did not retire on top. He actually still played for a few more years. And he helped the Celtics, uh, he helped the Bucks get to the 74 finals. Unfortunately, they got taken out by Boston. He decided to retire after the 74 season, and Milwaukee just fell 
flat. Well, anyway, he would then work as a color commentator on CBS with games with Brent Musburger. But he would do that for a season and then went to TBS for a season in 1999. But anyway, yeah. After his time in Kansas City, who got the Royals franchise from Cincy, retired as number 14. And the, and the Sacramento Kings still honor that number being retired. Milwaukee also retired as number one, despite the fact he only played a few years with the Bucks. The Big O has a statue of himself, a nine foot statue of himself outside the Bearcats Arena. And look, pretty good and all that. The Big O did his stuff and all that. So he had that legacy. He had the giant legacy of getting a triple double almost half the time he played his games, if you will. And that 62 season, <laughs> doing his job. In fact, Oscar Robertson would have a trophy named after him in the NBA. The Western Conference champions will be known as the Oscar Robertson Trophy winners. Cool. So Robertson played 10 years for the Cincinnati Royals in the NBA and four for Milwaukee. He played 1,040 games, 25.7 points per game, 9.5 assists per game, 7.5 rebounds per game. He didn't average triple double for his career, but like that's hard to do. Like his rebounding kind of went downhill after the 62 season. In the playoffs, he had a few key runs with Cincy, but they couldn't get past those Celtics even they tried. He won the title in 71. He was close in 74, getting to the final. But in 86 playoff games, he had 22.2 .2 points per game, 8.9 assists, and 6.7 rebounds. In fact, Robertson actually donated a kidney to his daughter, who suffered lupus-related kidney failure. He's been an honorary spokesperson for the National Kidney Foundation ever since. The Big O actually auctioned off his championship ring, selling for a lot of money and all that. But yeah, the Big O was really the giant star of basketball and made point guards seem important in the world of basketball. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond, I do.